Well, Greece was multiracial, or rather, biracial. Why has no one ever mentioned that? It's time to blow the lid off the lies. Herodotus claimed the Sesostris armies first colonized the Greek Isles. Others say it was a contingent of Ethiopian colonists. The Pelasgians were of African origin and inhabited Greece long before the Dorians, that is, the Whites, came and displaced them. But, for the sake of argument, let's say the Dorians really were the original inhabitants of Greece. And as long as we're telling that lie, let's go ahead and say the Pelasgians were Whites as well and that the blacks who lived just over the Med were all emigres and not native inhabitants. Just how much contact did the Greeks have with the blacks, and how great was the cultural influence of Africans on the first white civilization? After the Greeks took custody of Egypt from the Persians, you'll note that the Greeks living in Africa began to call themselves pharaohs, like Ptolemy Soter did. They adopted the religious beliefs of the Africans, and began to dress like the Egyptians, rather than like the Greeks or Macedonians. And when these Greeks brought African culture to Rome, even the Romans couldn't resist. The Romans adopted the cult of Isis. Egyptian priests went to Rome and performed ceremonies for the Isiac cultists. Now, when in all of human history have you heard of the conquerors taking on the dress, religion, language, and customs of those they conquered? Greece didn't do this with any of the nations they ruled, except Egypt. But we see Africa's influence elsewhere, in the Greeks' literature and artwork, where the idea of a black man and a white woman was not only unremarkable, it was celebrated. We see it in the figures from everyday life, such as this man kneeling with an object, or this sculpture of an African possibly dancing. Clearly, this brother hung around that bunch of boy lovers too long. Or this African figure, believed to possibly be as old as 1000 BC. Further proof the black presence in Greece predates Alexander and Leonidas by hundreds of years. African heads were particularly favored when it came to perfume flasks and wine jars. This symbolized the Africans were associated with beauty and gaiety. By the way, where are the British, or the Dutch, or Germans, or Spanish in the Greeks' art? Considering these same white Europeans claim to trace their heritage back to the Greeks, they ought to be everywhere. But instead, they're nowhere to be found, in Greek art or literature. So much for a Greco-European connection. Moving right along. The Greeks even incorporated Africans and Africana into their mythology, such as Cepheus and his wife Cassiopeia, who were the king and queen of the mythical realm of Ethiopia. Classical scholars, that is to say white, say that the Ethiopia mentioned in Greek mythology is not the same as the physical Ethiopia in Africa, that it was a fictional place located somewhere in modern-day Palestine. Be that as it may, According to the Greeks, the people of the mythological Ethiopia were dark-skinned and woolly-haired, just like the Ethiopians in Africa. Here we see Memnon, another of the kings of Ethiopia, about to go to battle flanked by two of his fellow Ethiopian soldiers. Apparently things didn't work out for old boy because we see Eos, the goddess of the dawn, carrying him away for burial. Notice her color, pale white, and his, jet black. And here we have a sculpture of Memnon from the 2nd century AD. He's shown with short curly hair, big lips, and... Hey! What happened to his nose? Sometimes the appearance of people from Ethiopia would vary, but, as we'll explain later in the video, whites have always had their hang-ups where the Ethiopians were concerned. Not to mention, the Greeks admired the Ethiopians and credited much of their civilization to them, so they were not as color-conscious as the Euroclowns. Claimed the location of Ethiopia was in and around modern-day Palestine, but as David Sachs writes in a dictionary of the ancient Greek world, neither Homer nor any of the other early Greek writers gave Ethiopia any sort of location. And when the Greeks did finally begin to write of where Ethiopia was, they placed it in Nubia, not Western Asia. Furthermore, Herodotus wrote the Ethiopians were the most beautiful and longest-lived of the human races. 
Imagine that. The first time black is beautiful is expressed in recorded history. It was done by the Greeks. But hey, who are we going to believe? The ancient Greeks or the Euro? Stop all the goddamn movement!